Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a new year. A few announcements before I hand it over to Nirmala. Uh, first of all, we're going to be doing online this week and next week, and then we'll evaluate if we'll be back in person. I noticed that in the, this Sunday, January 10th, 9 a.m., Avery Rowland and Jack Stahlberger are the uh, acolytes. Uh, another thing to remind you about, we do have some openings for the mission trip next summer, most likely June 20th to 25th. Your cost uh, will be $250 or less, you need to get a deposit in to guarantee a spot. We've got seven of 13 spots taken, so at this point there are six spots left, and I believe you need to be in eighth grade now to be able to go. So keep that in mind, call the church office if you have questions, have your parents email me, this is a video of, for this summer. Thank you. I want to do something different, something that makes a difference. Typical is boring, it's safe, it's easy, but what's the point of that? I want an adventure, something that matters, that meets a real need, that's a part of what God is doing. I want to grow to be changed, to lead, and see someone else grow too. I want to listen, listen to another person's pain, to learn what I can do and help every way I can. I want to be a part of something big that brings thousands of people together, that tears down walls and makes the world a better place. I want to celebrate what God is doing in every culture, every community, and in every person I meet. So this summer, I want to do something different, something that makes a difference. Good evening. Welcome back. Hope you had a good uh, Christmas celebration, New Year's celebration. It might be different uh, last year. Uh, here we are, um, beginning a new year, uh, 2021. Um, we are looking forward to uh, the new year of confirmation. Um, uh, hope, hope you will enjoy the upcoming uh, confirmation lessons. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this new year. Lord, we don't know what's going to happen in this new year. We are optimistic because you are our God. You take care of us. You did take care of us throughout the year 2020. Lord, we are here to learn and to listen and to grow in our relationship with you, Jesus. Come and help us, teach us to know you more and more and to grow in our faith and in our relationship with you and with one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's lesson is about the book of Psalms. When you open the Bible, in the middle, we see the book of Psalms. When you are tired, when you are worried, when you are ang anxious, where do you go? Where do we go to receive comfort, to receive wisdom and guidance? 
we people of God, people of faith, open the book of Psalms. Psalms are the poems. Psalms are the collection of praises. Israelized used Psalms to worship God. They used Psalms in their homes for their personal devotion and personal prayer time. Psalms are very, very easy for us to understand and to relate. Psalms usually help us to voice our feelings, our emotions to God. The Psalms remind us that God is a loving God. God, God is a good listener. God wants us to talk to him. God is always there for us. There are 150 Psalms in the book of Psalms. 73 Psalms were written by King David. Psalm 90 was written by Moses. And other Psalms were written by different authors. The book of Psalms is divided into five books. The first one, Psalm 1 to 41. The second book is Psalms 42 to 72. And book 3 consists of Psalm 73 to 89. And the book of fourth book consists of Psalms 90 to 106. And the fifth one consists of Psalm 107 to 150. In these Psalms, there are many themes, main themes occurs. The main themes are praise, God's power, forgiveness, thankfulness, trust. So when, when, when we are uh, talking to people, when we are visiting families, when we visit people who are in the hospital or who are in the deathbed, we pastors always read from the book of Psalms. We all know about Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is the psalm of comfort and hope. Psalm 23 assure us that the Lord is of a shepherd. He provides, he protects. King David wrote Psalm 23. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. 
Though I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. It's good for all of us to memorize Psalm 23. When you are worried about something, when you are anxious about something, you can recite this Psalm 23 to receive comfort and hope and to be assured the Lord is our shepherd. He provides, he protects. During the time of loss and grief, people of God are reminded of this psalm of comfort. Even though you walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. King David wrote this psalm from his own life experience. When he was a shepherd boy taking care of his sheep, the Lord protected him. The Lord spoke to him. See, all these Psalms, 150 Psalms, were written by different people. They were all guided by the Holy Spirit and they wrote these 150 Psalms. The whole Bible is inspired word of God. So when we are tired, when we are anxious, we come to the book of Psalms. There are some Psalms are written from the life experiences of King David. King David committed an adultery with Bathsheba. King David killed Bathsheba's husband, King Uriah. Prophet Nathan convicted David, confronted David's sinfulness. And David wrote Psalm 51. I just would like, like to read Psalm 51. Psalm of confession and forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me thoroughly from my sins and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. King David confessed his sins to God and asked God to forgive him 
and ask God to create a new nature, new spirit in him. When we are guilty, when we commit sins of any, we can come to God to confess our sins, be honest to God about our disobedience, about our sins, and ask God to forgive us. God forgave David and called David as a man after God's own heart. Even we read some words from Psalms in the New Testament. There are 116 verses taken from the book of Psalms and they are used by the writers, gospel writers and the writers of other New Testament books. For example, Psalm 22, Jesus, Jesus when he was dying on the cross, he used Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Oh my God, I cry by day, day, day and night, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. When you read Psalm 22, Psalm 22 is the description of Jesus' suffering on the cross. When Jesus was suffering, he was mocked, he was rejected, he was crucified. People shouted at him, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus used psalms in his own ministry, in his own preaching, even at the cross. There are many other writers referred psalms in their writing. There is one verse in Psalm I like, I recite every day, every minute in my heart. That verse is, the Lord's mercy endureth forever and ever. God's love is endureth forever and ever. We all can recite that verse. God's love endureth forever and ever. In many Psalms, this verse occurs again and again and again. His mercy endureth forever. There are psalms of thanksgiving. Lord, you're good. You're great. You're trustworthy. You are faithful. Especially Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. 
come into his presence with singing, know that the Lord is good. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endureth forever and ever. And his faithfulness to all generation psalms of thanksgiving god is our creator god is our sustainer god is our savior he is in control we can trust him we we can give thanks to him at all times let us count our blessings one by one and to see what God has done for us. So we give thanks. We give thanks to God. And there are, th uh, uh, there are psalms of trust. There are psalms telling us, reminding us God's power. God is on the throne. God is in control of all things happening around the world. He has a plan for all people. His plan will come to pass. So we are to worship him as our King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And there are psalms of cry, complaint, laments. Why? 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 Why I am suffering? Why things are not going well? We can come to God at all times, whether it in good times or bad times. We can cry to him, bring all our dreams, hopes, doubts, our sinfulness, our needs. He listens. He listens. And he helps us. So we people of God can put our trust in God. So psalms are beautiful poems. Anyone can easily understand the writings of psalms. As a confirmation, students, we are isolated. We are taking online classes. It's hard to be alone without meeting your friends, without having a sports activities, all to be together, talking and playing together and, and enjoying each other companies is very hard. It's very hard. Some of you are anxious. Some of you are worried. So at this time, you come, you read the book of Psalms. Psalms 23, Psalm 100, Psalm 90, Psalm 91. There are Psalms of praise. Even if you don't know what to say, you can just read the Psalms. People in the Old Testaments, they sang the Psalms. Psalms brought them comfort, reminding them God is not up there somewhere. 
God is with them. There is an intimate relationship with God and his people. Even the people of other nations, the people of other religions, they were attracted by the Psalms. God the Jehovah is a special one, a unique one, personal one. Even they pray the Psalms. So, students, we miss seeing you in person. We are praying. We are praying very hard. One day we all will be together. Until then, we keep trusting. Trusting in God. Trusting in God's promises. I encourage you to memorize Psalm 23. It's beautiful psalm. It's only six verses. I'm also encouraging you when you're down, when you're depressed, when you're anxious, Remember this verse. God's love and mercy endures, endures forever and ever. May, when you are in the small group, talk about your experience as David wrote his experience, his relationship with God. We all of us can write a poem how we express our trust, our failures, our feelings, our anxiety to God as well as our thanksgiving. To God. Now let's recite Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May you have a good small groups discussion. Thank you.